I'd just like to uh, pay my respects to the elders, both past and present, of the land I'm here today, the uh, Gomoroi people, and I'd just like to say thanks to them uh, for letting me share some of my cultural knowledge from my area where I come from. This is this this is a fishing spear. We call this a, a dindi. Um, uh, it was mainly used uh, as a fishing uh, for uh, piecing uh, fish's body. Um, as you can see, the prongs were set in a, in a in a special way, so that when it pieced the fish's body, it it had opened out, it had spread out, and the fish it had get stuck on there wouldn't fall off. So um, that was a pretty important weapon, was a fishing spear, and it was used mainly along um, uh, the rivers, uh, in the lagoons, along the lakes, uh, out of Brewarna where the ancient fish traps were used, uh, where, where the fish would come into the stone fish traps, and um, they, they'd uh, uh, spear, there'd be uh, abundant fish back in those days, it would be cod, yellow belly, black brim, catfish, so, uh, so yeah, so that was our um, fishing spear. Uh, up next we got a um, death or punishment spear. Uh, this was um, this was made by uh, mulga, mulga wood or um, gigi wood, whatever bush timber they could find from off the rivers. Um, they'd uh, place these stone quartz rocks which they'd find on the ridges just away from the, uh, the rivers and they'd place them in with, uh, set them in with the mulga or spinifex gum, which was only found in a certain time of the year. Um, the tribal law was a very, very strong law compared to uh, the laws of today. Uh, if there was an horrendous crime committed within the tribes, uh, whether it had been a, a, a murder or rape or, or child molestation, the men would be judged and put before the tribe and the spear, this death or punishment spear, they would uh, be uh, put through them. That was there for um, the crime. So, um, and not like the crimes, so a lot of our people get away with crimes today. Our law was a very strong one. Yep, so that was our death and punishment spear. One of the other spears I couldn't bring in today was, uh, it was a hunting or a, a fighting spear. And um, this was launched um, uh, with the with the Woomera, and the Woomera is Aboriginal word for a launching pad, or uh, uh, so it was placed in in the in the um, back here with our little the, the point, and it would be thrust to use for hunting and in, in tribal fights. So that was our Woomera. <laughs> Up next we had a uh, bull roarer. Okay, this was uh, when um, when twirled, twirled through the air, it used to make a, a, a low droning sound or a, a burring sound, if you're going to say, but it was mainly a means of communication within the tribes uh, to let them know if there was a, a, a corroboree on or, or a tribal fight. And um, I've also, uh, my dad was told that it was also used uh, as a, like a mating call. So yeah, that was our um, bull roarer. Um, up next we've got a, a parian shield. This was used in um, tribal tribal wars. It was mainly when the men would get down on down on their knees just to protect themselves. So it wasn't much of a a, a big covering, but it was that little bit of a protection. So that was our shield. Okay. Uh, up next we've got a uh, stone axe. Um, this was um, made by, with a handle from the bush timber. Uh, it was uh, a stone, the right shape, which was found in the in the water, where the water used to run over. That shape uh, was shaped, natural shape, and then rubbed down with the stone, another stone to get the the point. It was placed in the handle here and um, bound with uh, sinews from the kangaroo tail and then with the spinifex or mulga gum and that was made and that was used mainly to um, cut uh, the bark dishes or coolamans which the women used uh, uh, bark canoes on, from the river gums and also 
uh, on the sand hills you used to see a lot of the um, scarred trees, they were used for um, coffins. Uh, so if you've seen them out on the sand hills, they were coffins. Um, they're also used to, um, to break open trees to get honey uh, with the wild bees and also um, to uh, break the uh, rotten trees open if there was grubs, rickety grubs and that in there. So that was our stone axe. Okay. Uh, this one is a, a bundi. It was also used for the same purpose for um, in tribal fo uh, fights and uh, hunting and it was also used as a, as a throwing stick for small animals and into flocks of birds. Nulla nulla was used in tribal fights for hunting. Uh, up next we've got a, um, a, a, a battle axe. Uh, this is a Nyambar battle axe. Um, um, this was used also in hunting uh, in tribal tribal wars, hand-to-hand -hand combat fighting. It was a, a lethal weapon. Okay, so that was our battle axe. This was just a smaller version of the battle axe. We call this one a lil lil, and it was also um, it was used mainly uh, for fighting and hunting too. And it was also used for throwing to when they were hunting. Okay, so that was our lil lil. These were just our um, music clips or um, music music sticks or clap sticks and they were mainly used by the women and the men when there was uh, uh, corroborees on and, or dance and so when they sung their music they used to use these right, so that was our clap sticks. Uh, this was a stone stone knife or an adze. Um, it was similar to our, the um, stone axe with, where the rocks would be flaked off, sharp rocks, and, and put in a handle and bound with the um, spinifex gum or mulga gum. Um, which was found only a certain time of the year when it was the sap was running, and uh, it was mainly used for cutting up meat and um, and the furs. Okay, so it was our stone knife, the baron or returning boomerang. This was used on the plains to throw into flocks of ducks or galahs. Also, the young boys would play a game by drawing a circle and see who could catch it or get it closest to the circle. One of the main purposes it was used for was to snare the wild ducks. A giant net was set across a lagoon or water hole. When the ducks were on the water, the men would whistle like hawks, which would frighten the ducks. The boomerang would then be thrown over the ducks. They would swoop down into the nets, and many would be caught this way. The nets were made from possum and human hair.